or 62 milliseconds. And then next time you toggle the delay for another 62 milliseconds. So between the 62 milliseconds, that's when you're supposed to do a debug and capture. Between the, when you call the delay 62 milliseconds function, that's when you're supposed to call the debug capture. And if you're not toggling, you don't um, no, you still should. When you're not toggling, you still should have that delay. Is there any other questions about instructions? So. So one thing you have to do is uh, activate PLL. So in lab, like two or three or, or one, your processor is using an internal os oscillator, which is at 12 megahertz. And some of you guys think it might be running at 8 megahertz. No, but it's actually running at 12 megahertz. But in this lab, you're changing it to 50 megahertz for it to run faster. So that, help, that has a, a lot of effect on your delay function. Um, so you do wait for much longer than you Anyone has a problem activating the PLL, you can pretty much just copy copy the program from the book or from Obama's website. He gave us a starter program that has it all in there. Right. So just copy that, and you don't exact, exactly need to know how it works. Just uh, just know that it converts an eight megahertz crystal to a fifty megahertz. Okay. Um, so I already downloaded. So there should be, oh, you only need the initialization. Okay, so the part that, it's like a five-step thing, or six-step? Yeah, it's like a five-step thing. Okay, that's what I was trying to do. Yeah, yeah. It goes on and has like a delay function of like a one-second delay. Um, I don't know. Just copy everything from the yeah, PLL initialize. Until it returns, when it calls bx catalog. Just that whole function. Okay, so it also includes this PLL initializing thing? Uh, yes, because that's part of the function. Okay. Yes. We're having trouble whenever we're um, trying to write ff to the array first. Um, it's alternating between FF and zero, 00. Is there a specific way we're supposed to increment our um, our pointer to the right. area? That's actually very important. So, um, so the uh, Cortex M3 processor you guys are using is byte addressable. So, which means each address is pointing can point to a byte. And in, in this lab, right, they ask you to store everything into 32 bits, right? Like, if the input is uh, 0, well, let's look at this one. You, you see, you don't, you're really only storing 2 bit, two bits of information, but it's asking you to store into a 32 bit. Mm -hmm. So, 32 bit, which is 4 bytes, right? So, every time when you increment your address, you would increment 4. So, does that mean that when you're declaring your array, you need to declare it? Um, with, you need to align it by four. Um, uh, no, not align by four. You, you should you should keep the same alignment. Um, so, but we we need to think about this. Are you using the space operator to uh, yes to initialize your yes. array buffer? Oh, the dumb buffer. Okay. So so we think about this. So when you do space four, this four means four bytes. So okay. if you want, so if you want like, so if you want the four locations, just the four elements in your array, right? So you need four times four, which is sixteen. So you're ready to reserve sixteen bytes for four elements. So that's actually very important. So yeah, keep that in mind because it asks you to have a buffer size of enough to store three seconds, right? Yeah. So. 
Right. You see here, here it says, uh, we want to create an array capable of storing about three seconds worth of time measurements. And look, the outer loop of your lab three executes in about 62 milliseconds. That's why we have the delay. Okay. So we, you should always call the delay, no matter if it's toggling or not toggling. So when we're writing uh, during our debug initializing, um, would we write a four, four digit hex to each location instead of two? Um, yeah, you write a, like FF, 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 okay. FF, FF. Then you, you want to increment your index by four. Other questions? So you so you should have two buffers with about so look at here, so it only calculated for you, right? So then you have three seconds worth of stuff and you have sixty two milliseconds of uh, for each for each time you go through one loop and then so it tells you that you need fifty of them. So you can based on that you can calculate how much space you need to reserve. And this goes same thing for the pointer to the arrays because the pointers are addresses. So they're supposed to be four bytes, right? Okay. And the heart the heartbeat is really not that bad. So I mean pretty much you had to initialize PG2 correctly to output. And just uh, within your loop, just toggle it every time. And you have a 62 milliseconds delay already inside the loop. So you just every time you toggle, it's supposed to toggle at a rate of 62 milliseconds. Uh, just be careful. We initialize both PG, the, the, the port G and the port E. Careful about the clock initialization. Don't initialize things twice, something like that. So you only need to initialize the clock once. Well, um, just, yeah, well, once for E and once for G. Okay. Don't do it twice for E and twice for G. Okay. Or don't, don't, don't initialize E, and then when you initialize G, you roll a zero to that bit. You know? okay. Careful about that. Um, so before you, you're supposed to call the loop, so you're supposed to call PLL initialize, make sure it's at 50 megahertz. And you also need to call cystic. Actually, what, I think you call cystic initialize in the debug initialize. Right. So that's another point you get right. right. Um, so the debug, the so the cystic initialize that's also should be in the book. So just copy that in and um, just initialize it before. Going into the loop, going to the loop, and um, one more function you should use is uh, if you go to the project, the cystic project, um, there is a cystic wait function. So you got, so you know, you guys in lab two and three, you guys use the delay function, which has like a subtraction thing. Uh, that is very a very imprecise way to do it. So. And once you change the clock to 50 megahertz, right, everything is going to change. You have to add a number again or something. So what you should really do, and there's a, you should try using the, um, what's that called? It's called a cystic weight function. You should copy that from the cystic project. And basically, it, it takes in the parameter in R0. Um, so so basically, before you call the function, which is a, so, so we call a cystic weight. This is for your uh, 62 milliseconds delay. Before you do that, load something into R0. So in here, and this is like passed as a parameter. And um, this number, like if you upload a two, it means you delay for two, times 20 nanoseconds. So you can, and this is already, this is all initialized to be uh, for the 50 megahertz. So you, you don't have to worry about any number issues. 
So, so like you can use this to get your 62 milliseconds. Another thing to be careful is save your registers inside your functions, including the link register. Because if you call a function inside the function, you're going to lose that link register and bad things is going to happen. Um, so in the initialize, you just uh, fill the array with all ifs. Uh, initialize a pointer to the beginning of the array. It should take like four, should take four instructions to do that. Um, activate the cystic timer. See, see, in this case, you're calling a function inside a function. So you gotta make sure you save your link register. Because the link register is what tells the function, oh yeah, after you complete this function, where do you go back to? Um, um, so this, you can just Define the new code and co copy from the book. Right? And in, inside the debug capture, this is probably this is probably the hardest thing you do write in this lab. Um, so I don't know why they let you use. I don't know why you store only two bits of information to 32 bits. Seems a little bit waste of space for me, but that's what it tells you to. And and you guys know how to shift registers and dump it into here and increment. Right. So you just dump p0, p1, and the time into the two arrays. And make sure you restore any registers you used. Oh, so does anyone understand what this means? What is that asking you? Anyone don't know yet? So this is asking you to do math, basically. <laughs> um, so so I, I, the whole point of this lab is to teach you certain techniques are very bad for your programming. For example, for example, if you are, you know, it's a debug, the debug capture, right? That's used to, for you to ob observe stuff, right? But it wouldn't help if that thing takes more time than your actual program. So what we want is for the debug capture to be minimally intrusive, so it doesn't affect the actual behavior of your program. Does that make sense? Sort of. Okay. Like when you, so, like when you do a breakpoint, right? When you actually do a breakpoint, you can't actually run the program in real time. So some of the functionalities will definitely not work because you, you're breaking right there. So that would be considered like very, very intrusive. So this dump it would be, well, th th this is why you're calculating. You're calculating how much time to execute your debug capture function. Uh, how you do that is by assuming every instruction takes two clock cycles. That's just a rough estimate. And since you're running a 50 megahertz clock, you should know how much um, you should know how much is each clock cycle, and then using that you can calculate how long does your your debug capture function actually takes, and then you want to do that, and, and then you want to calculate the time between you call the debug capture function, and then you, you can get a ratio of like like a percentage of like. This debug capture is like what percentage of your whole program, and then you can get an idea of oh yeah, is this taking a lot of time or too much time is or not. So like if your debug capture program takes like five milliseconds, then you're not going to toggle at 62 milliseconds anymore. You could be toggling at like 67 milliseconds, so that wouldn't be good for your program. Any questions? Anyone having problems with their programs? I don't ask. Or 
is that just syntax errors? <laughs> Um. Right, that's a picture, right? So that's uh, the blue line, that's a heartbeat. Toggling at 62 milliseconds. And let's see. And that's a Uh, one thing you guys, do you guys understand Indianness? Like little Indian, big Indian? Anyone want to clarify on that? It's a little bit tricky. It actually matters a lot for the program because, for, for the memory part, because it, it determines how the data works. So like if you, so if you store like an x86, 49 into to like a, assuming this is 0, 0, 0, 0, 4, 0, 0, 0, like this is one byte, right? And this is another byte. So then you have location. So this takes two bytes, and you know each address points to a byte. So the question is, the question is, is this 49 or is this 86? Right. That's Indianness. So, so I remember little Indian is when you store four. Uh, that's when you store forty nine first in the lower address, and you store eighty six. It's kind of actually important when you do the memory. Anyone finished the lab yet? Got it working? I guess we wouldn't be here. <laughs> um, I guess, uh, oh, uh, one more thing. So when you copy the PLL and the SysTick into your program, remember to also copy the address definitions. Um, there's going to be like, you know, when they use EQU, right, for those bunch of labels. Copy them into your program as well. Or else the functions will know what labels, what they mean. So, yes. Again, the... the File that Alano said where it says in the lab to start with that, it gives us the the cystic main, it gives us cystic, and it gives us PLL. You're saying to go into those individual subroutines oh. and copy the actual code and put them all into one program? Wait, but well, Mono told you to That's what I mean. That's what I'm saying. So the in the lab it tells us go use this one particular file. Oh, is it? Yeah. And when you open that so I didn't know that. three separate codes, and then it calls them as a subroutine. Wait, so... Right there. Cystic underscore 1968 ASM. Oh, uh, okay. So um, it, has, it has the PLL, I mean, it has a cystic already functioning over it. You can um, do that, yeah, you can do that. Um, the reason I started, see, why I, I did this lab? I started with lab three. Lab three because most of the code are actually quite the same on lab three, you know. So I just copied the PLL function and the cystic function into lab three. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, that that was just the, my intuitive way, but you can you can use uh, I mean you can use that that as well to start out with. And I just took the main program on that. Okay. And still call the PLL assistant. Yeah, that should work. Okay, I right. just want to make sure you that, expect it all to be in the same. Uh, no, no, no. Um, does that thing have a. Okay, so that thing does have PLL function in the yes. already. Okay. And it has, I mean, it, it has, you can set the PLL to all different cooperation. Right, by commenting, by commenting off and on commenting, right? Yeah, right. yeah that, that'll, so be, that'll be fun.
But yeah, after three seconds, you just don't capture any data anymore. Okay. Um, yeah, because uh, in the debug, in the debug capture, right, it tells you first thing you check if it's a uh, arrays are full. So in here, is, we turn immediately if the buffers are full. So you just don't capture anything. Else.